many of you have ever felt stuck? Maybe even paralyzed with fear? You want to do something differently, you want to make that life change, but you just can't seem to take that step. Whenever I think of being stuck, I instantly go back to a time when I was literally stuck on the side of an icy ledge. I had gone on a simple backpacking trip with my sister, and through a series of events, we ended up with passes to climb Mount Whitney, which is in California, the tallest mountain on continental US. Well, we were wildly unprepared, but the adventure side got the better of us, and we decided to do it anyway. And everything was going well until we were about a half a mile from the top of the mountain. And suddenly, I found myself plastered to this icy ledge. And my sister yells, come on, get down, we gotta go back. And I mumble, I, I can't. She's like, frustrated, don't be a jerk, just get off the ledge, we'll do it another time. Well, I, I knew in my head she was right. But in my heart, we were a half a mile from the top of the tallest mountain. I couldn't quit right now. The other truth was, I was stuck. I was so paralyzed with fear, I couldn't move up or down even if I wanted to. And just at that point, I started to slip. And so I jammed my boot into the side of my mountain. I clawed on as hard as I possibly could. At that point, I knew I had to make a decision. And my heart was pounding, my legs started shaking, and, and I, I just started to, to decide, I'm gonna take one step, just one step, and then reassess. So I take one giant step up, and it got me high enough that I could just see over the ledge. And quite to my surprise, it was flat and dry, and I could see the sun sparkling on the mountain right in, in front of me. That one step changed my entire perspective. That one step made the difference between making it to the top of the mountain, which we did, or going back, mission unaccomplished. And doesn't that happen to us in life? If we could just take that one step and see things from a different perspective, perhaps options would come in that we didn't know were there. Do you know how many thoughts we have in a day? Take a guess. Two thoughts. Approximately 40,000 thoughts a day. And of those 40,000, 98% of them are the same. Talk about a broken record <laughs> going through your head. And of those 98%, Guess how many of them are negative? Forecast. Almost 80%. Well, it's no wonder we're stuck. It's no wonder we can't find those answers. We're in this place that we can't figure out anything from, in this negative, negative patterning going through our brain. So how can we get unstuck? How can we find another system of resourcing our inner intelligence? There's one tool that I found to be very powerful. It's a perspectives exercise. And what you do is you take whatever it is that you feel stuck on, and you explore a variety of different perspectives. And then you choose which perspective you want to go back into. You fully embody that. And from that place, you come up with action items to complete that goal. I was working with a group of A-type entrepreneurs. You know the kind of people that need answers yesterday? Anybody know anybody like that? <laughs> Maybe intimately? Um, yeah, they didn't want to talk about their feelings. They didn't want to explore different points of view. They wanted answers now. But I challenged them. Let's just give it a try. So one guy, John, said, fine, I'll do it. I've got something. It's impossible. Nobody's been able to help me. It's like, all right, maybe that's true, but let's give it a try. So it turns out it was a very difficult situation. It was a personal one. His sister was a drug addict. She had two kids, and her life was a mess. And John and his sister's mother had passed away, and their father was aging and, and starting to need help himself. So John felt like all of the responsibility was his. And up until this point, he had done everything to help her but it was beginning to weigh on him, both financially and his time, and also his emotions. 
So I asked John, so what perspective do you have on this situation right now? He's like, it's, it's, it's helpless. It's impossible, I told you. OK, so let's stand in helpless. I was like, where do you feel that in your body? And you can see the confusion and the brain synapses crossing. He's like, what? Where do I feel it in my body? I was like, yeah, where, where do you feel it? I, I don't know, I, my shoulders and my chest, I guess. And you could see his shoulders were caving in. There was this heaviness. I was like, what color is it? And he scoffed. Oh, color is going to help me? Maybe. What is it? He's like, I don't know. It's, it's gray. What temperature? It feels cold. OK, let's go to a different perspective. So here he was angry. He's like, I'm angry. I don't want to have to deal with this situation. Where do you feel that? I feel it in my head. My, my head is, it feels like it's going to explode. And it was red, and he could smell gasoline. Then he went into a little boy. John, who just wanted his mother to come back and take care of him. He felt like that little ball, that plastic, round, smooth ball you played with when you were a kid. The color was light blue, and he could smell apple pie. Then he stepped into superhero, I can do anything mode. From here, it was purple. He, he felt like beating on his chest. He could hear bass drums going behind him. Here, he felt power. Energy was going throughout his entire body. This was his most powerful place. Then we stepped into, forget it. I'm not going to do anything. I'm tired of it. I don't have to do anything. It doesn't matter. Here, the color was white. And he could hear church bells. And he felt this, this hollow place in his heart. So I said, if you could choose any of these perspectives, which one would you go back to? And he's like, well, superhero, I can do anything, of course. Why wouldn't I choose that perspective? Good question. Why wouldn't you? So I had him step back into superhero, embody it. He got in, he started to beat his, his, his chest. He could hear the bass drums going. He could see that color purple. And I said, from this one place, what's one thing you would do in regard to your sister? And instantly, he fell out of that and went into hopeless. I don't know. I told you I don't know. It's impossible. His shoulders caved in. I was like, you know that place. You can come back here anytime. Just for this moment, stand into that superhero place. Go back. So we got back in, did his stance, beat on his chest, heard the drums. Stay here. What's one thing that you would do for your sister? And you could see he was struggling to stay in. And I was just like, just say something. Just say anything. I clapped my hands, and I was like, just say anything. And he said, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, would, I, would, I would tell her I love her. And in that moment, time stopped. You could have heard a pin drop. And suddenly this, this tall, strong, successful man just began to cry. He's like, I, I've never told her that I, I love her. It's been four months. And John's sister went to rehab voluntarily on her own. She's even started to work for the company. She's been clean almost the whole time. And their relationship has been better than ever before. And even John stepped more into that patriarchal role. He took over part of his father's company. Things aren't perfect, but they're better than they've ever been. The entire family dynamic changed because of one piece of information. So simple, so personal, so specific. And we all have the capacity to do that. We don't have to be stuck. We can find our own powerful position. And from that place, it triggers the neurons within our bodies. It shoots to our brain. And it helps us to find that creative place and to find that body intelligence that's within us all. You don't have to be stuck. 
possibilities are endless and the answers are within you.